One of the questions that Eric and I commonly get here at the Gettysburg Museum of History is, what is your favorite item? And honestly, it depends on the day. There are all kinds of things here that are just so amazing and uh, each of us like them all in, in a different way. But for me personally, my favorite pieces are the, the ones that have a little bit of artistic expression from the soldiers in like World War I and World War II. Now we have focused on some of the helmets in World War II that soldiers decorated as they were you know, wrapping up the war and getting ready to come home. What we haven't focused on are some of the helmet art from World War I. And there are some pretty amazing pieces that we're gonna show here today. Now, before we get into some of this World War I helmet art, uh, some people might be asking, what does Gettysburg have to do with the First World War? Well, Gettysburg was the site of Camp Colt, which was a tank training ground in World War I. Eisenhower was one of the people who was here. And if you look at this poster right here, uh, it says, think, have you done enough? These Adams County boys have given their lives for you. So here are some People who were local uh, to Adams County who lost their lives in the Great War. So history didn't stop here in 1863. It continued on in World War I, World War II, and, and beyond. So I brought out a few of our painted World War I American helmets, and I want to talk a little bit about that and why they were painted. Um, at the end of World War I, a lot of the American soldiers that actually um, got into combat over in France saw a lot of the German helmets that were painted camouflage. And uh, they had unusual, you know, uh, color patterns and, and uh, I, I guess, you know, camouflage being fairly new in World War I. Uh, Americans thought that was pretty interesting. And at the end of the war, it was kind of a tradition or, or it became a tradition to um, paint their helmets and and most of these would have been painted either at the end of the war or during occupation duty or when they got home probably more in occupation duty but you know they wouldn't wear these fancy bright helmets in 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 combat in fact you rarely see photos of, of any American soldiers wearing painted helmets except maybe the um, division painting such as the just the division insignia um, you know, to, to do this elaborate artwork was something that was done later. And um, you see various themes. I mean, a lot of them are, are unit marked, um, like this 35th Division one, which has a very unusual camouflage pattern, kind of similar to the ger some of the German helmets that you would see. Um, and, then, and then another theme that you see over and over again is, is various patriotic scenes like like this one has all the flags of the allies um in world war one you have all, all the, the the different flags which is really cool and 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 again with with these helmets they, they would have usually a guy in the unit that would do them for guys and so you have various um degrees of of uh Ability. So some of them are really sharply painted. They look nice. Other ones are a little more amateurish. Here's another one that has that patriotic theme that has an eagle and flags and St. Miel and, and some, you know, and various scenes on there. Not really a camouflage pattern at all. It's more of a patriotic motif. Same with this one. You know, this one has an American eagle and, and, a, and a, uh, uh, a shield there. And uh, some some pretty wild camo, and then um, you have the Marine Corps helmets. This this one had a has a second division 
uh, insignia, but there was uh, there was Marines attached to the second division in World War One. So you have the Marine Corps emblem here. Here's another Marine Corps helmet that just has the the, the symbol and then a very unusual camouflage pattern. I want to focus on a few of these helmets here. So Eric mentioned that some of the painted helmets have the division insignia on them. So this is for the 77th Infantry Division. And you can see that this veteran even gave us a little bit more information. This is from Ralph Halsey of the 305th Machine Gun Battalion, Company B. And then I just really, really like the artwork that he included on this one showing the different landscapes. We're going to come back to this one in a second. Uh, Eric also mentioned the 35th Infantry Division helmet. Uh, these guys fought in the Mus Argonne offensive and something that's kind of cool here in addition to the camouflage uh, there's like this little snake that is wrapped around this helmet. Now this one here is kind of interesting and it contains a little bit of history that some people might be unaware of. You might be looking at this and wondering why in the heck would an American helmet have Russia painted on it and have a bunch of polar bears on it? Well after the conclusion of World War One there was a small contingent of Americans about 5,000 total who were sent to Archangel in Russia to basically help fight against the Bolsheviks who were fighting against the Russian government. So we were trying to lend aid to keep Russia from falling to communism. Uh, it's known as the, the polar bear expedition and it ended up not going well. But anyway, this is from a veteran who would have been Part of that expedition. So definitely something to look up and learn more about because it's a really, really interesting story. Some of my favorite units from World War I are the U.S. Tank Corps units, especially some of the ones in the 300 regiments that were trained here in Gettysburg at Camp Colt. Um, this is a camouflage painted helmet. It's got a lacquer on, and unfortunately that, people used to think that was a good idea to put lacquer on painted helmets back in the, in the old days, but it, it has the, it was, I think it's a 332nd Tank Battalion, which was trained at Camp Colt, I believe. And also, here's one. Now this one's in rough condition, but I was happy to find it. Um, this one is painted uh, Ameri AEF, American Expeditionary Forces, and uh, it actually says Camp Colt on it. And I think it also says 331st Tank Battalion on here. But yeah, it's in rough condition, but this is one of the only ones I've ever seen that actually says Camp Colt. Because again, you know, most of these helmets were painted post-war. Once the war was over, Camp Colt pretty much was done. Um, and so I'm not exactly sure which year or which month they went over, or even if they did, they might have been being trained at that time. I'm not sure. But it's an interesting helmet. Definitely love the fact that it says Camp Colt. And we have a few other ones. We have one that's made into a lamp. It's an artillery shell and it has a tank core insignia. And then we have another one that was painted later that has a really, um, out, you know, really excellent um, um, artwork of a tank on it. So, you know, I, I really like the tank core ones, especially, like I said, the ones in the three, the ones that were trained here, and the, most of the ones in the 300s, those battalions were trained at Camp Colt. Some of the other ones, um, the earlier ones, were trained in France. But yeah, some of my favorite helmets, and I love painted helmets, you know, and, and the artwork is just so interesting to me.
All right, well, there you go. Uh, those are a few examples of some of the helmet art that came out of World War I. Again, these are, are some of my favorite pieces here in the museum. So when you come to Gettysburg, definitely come to the Gettysburg Museum of History and check those things out as well as all of the other amazing artifacts here in this museum.